Michael Sanchez. <laughs> I was selling uh, school pencils. <laughs> I love so, that part. <laughs> so, um, I too am in the uh, restaurant industry, amongst other industries that I have invested in, startups. And um, first of all, I want to say thank you for inviting me. It's not so often that uh, uh, an owner of a business or few businesses is invited to weigh in on something like this. Um, in fact, I've never spoken anything like this, so bear with me because I'm a little nervous. Um, I'm a native New Yorker. I have a husband, a father of two small children in New York, um, or I hope to be in the uh, public school system if they, we win that lottery. And um, uh, I've been in business for a long time. And um, since I went to NYU, I was in marketing, and um, I started to get into the uh, restaurant bar industry. Uh, in five years, from when I was 25, 24 years old to uh, 29 years old, I expanded really fast. Um, my parents come from middle class. My mom was a New York City Board of Ed teacher. My dad was a manager of a greeting card store in Rockaway, Queens, where I grew up. And, um, you know, uh, luckily I have a great family that when times are bad as an entrepreneur, you know, they help me out. And I can honestly say that I, I value uh, you know, my family for helping me get to where I am. Um, I've grown, in those five years, I actually opened up six restaurants and grew so fast, and um, business was great. And um, the last three years is what I'm here to talk about. Everything has been downhill. And I wrote a speech, so <laughs> I'll try to stick to this as best as I can, and I'll, you know, um, and after I'd be happy to see questions, things like that. So, um, we're here to talk about the paid sick leave bill. And um, instead of talking about the laws and things like that, I wanted to give you my perspective from my company and just talk about costs and talk about what's going to happen to a company like mine. To I consider myself a young entrepreneur, someone who's hungry, someone who has a lot of motivation, someone who has a lot of pride to work in this city and do well in the city. So, I want to give you that perspective. Um, currently, right now, in my company, we have over 400 employees, spanning over uh, eight venues, ranging from sports bars, restaurants, uh, an event space, nightclub, um, and indirectly, I'm also responsible for employing 600 people in the uh, few startups that I've invested in and, and helped start with them. So, uh, indirectly and directly, I've employed over 1,000 people. And um, over the last few years, small business owner in New York City um, has suffered. I can say this with confidence because I too have suffered. And I won't exactly go over the last few years and, and to show you what we're going through, especially in this industry, the restaurant industry. Three years ago, and I'm going to give you numbers, I'm going to give you real numbers I, at this point. We're getting punched so hard by all these kind of initiatives that I don't care. I, I'm an open book and I want you to see everything that's going on because our business is literally being taken away. Three years ago, our margins, profit margins, were around 12%, which I consider healthy. Um, two years ago, we went down to 8%. So 33% of our business is wiped away. This year, we figure by the end of the year, we'll be at 4% profit margin. So in the past few years, we've gone down, we will go down 67%. This is without paid sick leave. This is without higher minimum wage. This is without a new government health care initiative. I want to go over where this 8% has gone, where my business has lost 67% of its profit. And the funny thing about it is, not one dollar has gone to our employees of these higher expenses, which is the messed up part about this all. Um, Eight percent represents one point six million dollars in my company. One point six million dollars of profit that used to go to investors, 
myself, the people that took the risk to open up the business to employ the people that we definitely care a lot about. And I want to go over my company very quickly before I go back into costs. I definitely consider myself um, a great owner-operator. Um, I do a 5% profit sharing with many of my employees. Um, we do a lot of company outings, which culminates into a staff trip to Disney World, which uh, we subsidize a lot of the cost for that. It's, it's an unbelievable team building experience. I also choose Disney World because I, I deem them like the best operators in the world for my industry. Um, we offer a matching 3% 401k plan to our employees who want to join. Um, and then also, uh, which I'm sure Tony and every restaurant owner does when there are employees who have a hard time with their family, emergency loans, whether they're sick, their family's sick, something's going on, we come, they come to us time and time again, happy to offer 0% interest loans anytime that employees ever come to us. I deem myself a good operator, and I deem myself a good operator in the hardest city to operate a business in the world. So, like Tony said, I take pride in being in this industry and doing this in New York City. I also take pride in running my business like a family, just like he said. You know, I think our initiatives, even though we've gotten pretty big, and I hope to get bigger, um, we still run this like a family. So, I want to go over where, the past couple of years, where we've lost our profits. So, higher expenses with inflation, gas prices being put onto our cost of goods sold, um, higher rents, higher insurance costs, uh, all things like that have chipped away at the profit. Next, accounting and legal fees from audits, which come from the labor department, which come from the sales tax department, those and the settlements that come with that. Whether you're an honest operator or not, you're going to pay something. It just it comes with the territory right now of a city and a state and a country that needs money. It just comes with territory, unfortunately, in my industry. I don't know why, but I guess we're like considered the ETMs now of, of, of uh, helping the government out. And um, that has chipped away an enormous amount in the past couple of years. Legal fees from lawsuits, whether they're frivolous, whether they're wage lawsuits, whether they're other kinds of lawsuits. Legal fees from lawsuits have cost several hundreds of thousand dollars over the past couple of years, plus settlements on top of that. Last couple of years, we've seen a huge intake of additional fines and penalties from new regulations, old regulations, people, uh, more investigators coming in versus once a year, now we see them quarterly, and every time they come in, they find something different, they fine us, we pay, it's just another cost of doing business. So, those are some of the major things that have taken $1.6 million away from opening up other businesses in the city. I've proven that when I make money, not only do I take care of my employees, which I can prove to you and I show you, but I open up more businesses and employ more people. So, what I just listed to you is the current state of my industry. Now, I want to look at the future of my industry with things like this, with the paid sick leave bill. So I told you I'm at 4% probably by the end of this year. With the government health care law that's going to take place in my industry in 2014, two of my places have over 50 employees. So if I run my business the way I'm running it currently, I will have to pay approximately $200,000 more for this health care program. That represents 1% of profit in my company. Now I'm down to 3%. Minimum wage is bound to go up. I mean, everyone talks about it. Um, it's, it they're talking about it going up a dollar. It's going to happen. So that $1 per person per hour per employee represents over $100,000 in my company. That's another half percent. Now I'm down to 2.5% profit. So, Get to paid sick leave bill in a second. So out of hundred dollars that I make in the till, ninety-seven and a half dollars goes to other people. Employees, 
cost of goods, lawyers, accountants, everything. Two and a half dollars goes to the people that invested and the people that operate the business. Ninety-seven and a half dollars goes everywhere else. Now the paid sick leave bill. So in my company, out of the 400 employees in the restaurant industry, 350 do not receive paid sick leave. 50 employees, um, whether they're um, in different positions like event planners, marketing positions, managers, um, chefs, people in higher positions, like we were talking about, they do receive paid sick leave. Now, 350 people don't. So let's talk about the cost of that. If I'm down to 2.5% profit margin. 350 times an average of $75 per person per day. You, you're, I mean, how much would it cost? I just want to know because I don't know this I don't. I really don't know the facts. But a minimum wage times eight hours. About 23 cents per hour. But you know, it's also based on workers only taking on average two to four days during the year, which keeps them. Okay, the that's, I mean, 23 cents per hour. <laughs> the average cost when it's calculated out. For, for your just, I mean, I'm talking about my math and my company. So explain to me, I have to pay someone minimum wage times eight hours, correct? Times nine days. I'm going to tell you that. It's no, I, I know what it is, but, but you're telling me it's 23 cents. I'm no, telling this you it's close to $75. Paid sick days is an average of 23 cents an hour. He's saying the course like of the year is about 23 cents an hour. That's not Okay. Numbers are. I, I, don't, I don't know where they are. I'm back at my, my company. Wait, so you can use your number. You're going to about another 120 So, So that's exactly it. <coughs> right, right. So another $120,000, which represents almost another point and a half. I'm close to zero now. As an owner of businesses, there's something called risk versus rewards. And managing and owning businesses in New York City, the risk is not worth the rewards anymore. And I want to keep opening up businesses. I love this city. This is where I'm from. This is where I've lived my entire life. I've never gone anywhere else. But in the past two years, I've employed zero more people in this city. I've opened up zero more businesses. But across the river, in New Jersey, I've opened up three new businesses. I've employed 120 new people there. Because simply, there are less regulations there. There's no talks of paid sick leave. There's no spread of hours. There's no, there's not the quarterly people coming into your place, making you feel like you're in, honestly, like communist Russia where someone's coming in every single day, you know, like to say, what are you doing wrong versus what are you doing right? And it's just been a lot easier in New Jersey than it has been in New York. I want to come back to New York and I want to start opening up more businesses. But with things like this that scare the crap out of me, and with all the other things that I talk about, I can't come back. And I won't come back. And a 33-year-old person that has spent so much time and energy hiring so many people, doing so much good for the city, and you're hearing me like, you know, it, it makes me angry that we're coming up these buildings. You know what, you say you talk to a lot of business owners, you're obviously not talking to them enough. So, to, to hear all these things, I hope that you guys really put some more thought into things and initiatives like this, and really put some more thought into what it will do to the small business community that you're so in favor of protecting. Because as a small business owner, you're not protecting me, you're pushing me out. So, sorry, I go.